Good morning. We welcome you to the Lord's house this morning. And it's good to see you. Talking to a few of you, it looks as if everybody escaped Hurricane Idella without any too many problems. At least uh, those of you that are here must have been okay. We're pretty close to the Gulf, but you know that storm just kind of churned its way up until it got up to the area where there's just swampland, and so not too many people. So that, that, that's good news. That's good news. So let us worship. We begin with our first hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature. I have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. (laughs) 
Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. May be seated.
The Lord be with you. We pray. Almighty God, your Son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption. Grant us courage to take up our cross daily and follow him wherever he leads. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Jeremiah 15, verses 15 to 21. In some of the Bibles, you will notice that when the thought changes, there is an extra blank line. And you see that between verse 18 and 19. And uh, the first part of this reading is very doom and gloom, complaining. The second part is the Lord's answer. Lord, you understand, remember me and care for me. Avenge me on my, of my persecutors. You are long-suffering. Do not take me away. Think of how I suffer reproach for your sake. When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight, for I bear your name. Lord God Almighty, I never sat in the company of revelers, never made merry with them. I sat alone because your hand was on me, and you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unending, and my wound grievous and incurable? You are to me like a deceptive brook, like a spring that fails. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. If you repent, I will restore you, that you may serve me. If you utter worthy, not worthless words, you will be my spokesman. Let this people turn to you, but you must not turn to them. I will make you a wall to this people, a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you to rescue and save you, declares the Lord. I will save you from the hands of the wicked and deliver you from the grasp of the cruel. The word of the Lord. We speak the psalm. <clears throat> In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. My life is consumed by anguish and by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction, and my bones grow weak. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. The words of Psalm 31, verse 4, my times are in your hands, was often placed on the old German baptismal certificates, their Taufschein. And many German people would have their Taufschein hanging in a frame in their bedrooms, quoting Psalm 31, verse 4. My times are in your hands. Wouldn't be too bad after what happened this last week for us to put Psalm 31, verse 4, in a frame and hang in our homes as well. Our second reading is Romans 8, 18 to 25. These words are also the sermon text for today. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly 
as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in, the hope, for in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Hallelujah. God's word is Matthew 16, verses 21 to 26. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed on the third day be raised to life. <clears throat> Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned to Satan, to, to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? This is the gospel of the Lord. May be seated. We invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Was anybody scared in the storm this last week? Were you? Yeah. You weren't? Well, I kind of prayed a lot. I was kind of scared. I have a question to ask you this morning. What do you think heaven is like? Think it's white? And silver and gold. The last chapters of the Bible talk about streaks of gold and pearly gates. What's that? And no thunder? Oh. Well, I have a bag here of some things that will not be in heaven. Okay? You want to see them? Okay. There won't be any need of these. You know why? There's no crying in heaven. Nobody will ever cry in heaven. I have a flashlight with me. Why won't we need flashlights in heaven? It all was sunny out. Very good. Would you like to take over? <laughs> You're right. The Bible says there'll be no night, so we won't need any flashlights. If it's always sunny out, why won't we need light bulbs? It's always, it's always light. light. Who's going to be the light in heaven? heaven? Jesus. We won't need any, any light bulbs. I brought something else. I have some keys. Your moms and dads have keys? Why won't we need keys in heaven? We don't need what? 
We don't don't need need cars. cars. What about about the house house in which you live? live? There'll be be no no bad bad stuff in heaven, heaven, so there there won't won't be any need to lock any doors. They'll They'll always always be open. open. No No keys. keys. Why won't there be any medicine in heaven? Nobody will ever get sick. You do? This is medicine from my house because sometimes I need it too. And I brought a book. This is a baseball Baseball trivia trivia book. book. Why Why won't we need these kind of books books in heaven? heaven. The minute minute we step step into heaven, heaven, we we will will know know everything. everything. So we won't won't need books, books, will we? We won't need to to go to school, school, but you have to go to school school here. here. All right? So those are all the things that won't be in heaven. But who but will who be, in, be heaven? in heaven? God. God. Jesus. Jesus. It's a picture with all the lambs, so Jesus will be there. He's our friend, isn't he? So we don't have to worry. We don't have to be afraid about going because he will be there to greet us. Who else will be in heaven? Those that have gone before parents. My parents parents are in in heaven. heaven. I'll be there too. too. I think I I might get get there before before you do. do. Maybe. Maybe. Who else else is in heaven? heaven? All the people people that that love Jesus Jesus and Jesus and God. God. Who else? else? Let me me give you a a hint. hint. Well, the how about the angels? So, So, can you remember remember what's what's not in heaven heaven and who who is in heaven? heaven? That's That's right. right. Let's Let's pray. pray. Can we fold our hands? hands. Dear Dear Jesus, Jesus, help help us to remember remember that you are our friend and we do not have to be afraid. afraid. But many Many things things of this world will will not be in our heaven, heaven, but it will be great and good. Amen. Thank you for coming up. We'll sing the next hymn.
<clears throat> In the name of our Lord and Savior, may his grace and mercy and wanting to take us to heaven live in our hearts all our days, no matter what we may face here in this earth. God's word is Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 25. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope, we are saved. These are God's words. In the world of God's creation, there's a lot of beauty. There's a lot of pleasure. There's a lot to be enjoyed. Every morning, when I step out of my house, I feel like taking a chair and sitting down for the concerts that the birds are giving in the trees around me. But we also know that there is bad pollution, decay, and calamity. Just think of what we have lived through this past week with Hurricane Adalia. Came turning up the west coast. Everybody wondered if it was going to turn in and change its course. But sadly, the poor people at Heaton Beach and St. Hatchie and Horseshoe Bay and maybe Cedar Key caught the brunt of it. Category 4 winds. Storm surge, the problem, the water coming in. My grandson's work on the beach, and a few days ago down there, all the payloaders and bobcats were scraping up sand on Gulf Boulevard. Why is that? Why are people wrong when they say, well, we live in, in paradise, everything is perfect? We live in a sinful world. Why the theme today is the way it is and the way it will be. Creation and Christians groan now. Creation and Christians will glory later. On that dark day when Adam and Eve listened to the devil, and fell into sin, the birds and the animals and the fish did not revolt against God. But everything was cursed. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 8 says, Everything is weariness. And these words indicate, Creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be, re be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. If somebody would have told me when I was a child 70-some years ago, that today people would be drinking purified filtered water out of plastic bottles and people would have filters on their faucets, I would not have believed it. A couple generations ago, many people in Florida did not have air conditioning. There were a lot more trees, bushes, shade, and cool. Trees have been replaced by buildings Buildings have hard surfaces on the top. The dirt paths to the beach are now paved with asphalt. Creation groans. 
creation deals with all the ills that have been forced upon us. Christians groan too. A beautiful Christian lady who never smoked a day in her life dies of lung cancer because she has inhaled secondhand smoke from somebody who was a chain smoker. Wow. A misguided sexual individual does not find other people to commit their evil deeds with, but targets someone younger, someone weaker, often a child. People go to work, honestly. Hold down respectable jobs and work hard as the Lord intended us to do. But then you see other people that have all the benefits and even more illegally. Ninth grader walks into Clearwater Countryside High School not too far from here with an angry manifesto. Pulls out a knife and stabs two of his classmates before the SRO officer takes him down. People are groaning. If the city west of here were to be named today, I'm, not, I'm quite sure that the name Clearwater probably would not be suggested. But then the Lord says to us in these words, he says, the suffering that you face in this world is not worth being compared to the glory that waits. The one who subjected uh, our world to anguish and rot and decay is also the same one who has promised and provided the redemption. Jesus died that you and I would never die. Jesus lives in heaven so that we can live with him as well. Then it says here that creation and Christians, God's people, eagerly wait for that day to happen. Now it says here <clears throat> that creation waits uh, to be liberated from the bondage of decay. I believe that these words in Romans chapter 8 are the closest the Lord comes to telling us what happens with the rest of creation in eternity. Now the Bible in 2 Peter 3 verse 13 says that the world will be destroyed by fire. And God will make new heavens and new earths. Does that mean new animals and new trees? Or does it mean that he's going to recycle and restore in newness, like you and me, his creation? If that were so, then mosquitoes will be in heaven and they won't bite. Nor will they fear being swatted. And the temperature will be a comfortable, even temperature without fear of an ice age or global warming. Bulk constrictors will not eat rabbits, raccoons, and squirrels. And Florida Everglade gators and bulk constrictors will not be mortal enemies. There will not be a need to plant trees and vegetables or weed them, or water them, or prune them. Companies like phosphate mining or big sugar will not despoil the Florida landscape or any landscape. You won't need a sprinkler system because one time your lawn is parched and the next time it's saturated with water, it will be totally controlled. Christians will rejoice too. We will share in the glory. No one in heaven will ever think about ending their life because they're so full of pain and suffering. The highest point where I live is the Skyway Bridge. And no high point in heaven will witness a great number of suicides because people are dismayed. 
No, no one, will one will think about, about death because, because life, life has, has become, become so, so hard. hard. You never you have, have to pick up the phone and say, uh, listen, listen to an automated, automated voice for, for you know five, five minutes and then wait another 32, 32 minutes for a, a warm body. body. God's on control. God's on duty all the time. He's the best computer ever. Christians will glory. Later. Later. Every, Every time, time you and I come, I come to church, church we, witness, we witness, we live Romans, Romans chapter, chapter 8. eight. Become, Become knowing the way it is and the way it will be. You will hear, hear of, of sin. sin. You'll hear of the problems, problems without and, and within. within. In every, in every service, service we, confess we confess our sins. But we will also, also hear God's, God's solution, solution the way it will be, be. His, gospel His gospel message. message. Sometimes, Sometimes it's been, it's been described, described as, as sin being the, the kick in the shins, and the gospel, the gospel message, message as the hug around the shoulder. shoulder. And you and, and I know, know that, the that the devil comes, comes to church, church as well. well. He doesn't, he doesn't sleep in on Sunday, Sunday morning. morning. He, would he would like nothing like better than to disrupt, disrupt the service. service. He would he like would nothing like better than, than to get into your mind, mind and not leave your troubles at the door, or not leave your troubles at the communion table, or not leave your troubles at the Lord's feet at confession, but to make you think about those things and to worry about them and to kind of tune out the rest. Said maybe the time will come that you walk out of church. Oh boy, I didn't get nothing out of that because I was thinking about something else. But Jesus also comes to church. We'll always save him a seat. His great power is on display through his word to cause us to rejoice, to cause us to be rejuvenated, to be rebuilt, to be able to go out into the world unafraid face what comes. <clears throat> we do not we always understand why the Lord does things the way he does. In the past month, to our way of thinking, there was a very sad funeral at our church in Seminole, as you folks well know. The man's name was David Howell. He was 54 years old. To our way of thinking, he was the most viable, active Christian in his entire family. He was Mr. Technology at our church. He's always in church, often alone. 54. Why, Lord? Why did you take your, your best witness home? Died of cancer affecting all his internal organs. And he, too, had prayed to die because the pain was so great. I was, I was gone, but they say that the, the sermon was based on his password in his computer. And his password, password was to remember Jesus Christ is hope. To remember Jesus Christ is hope. Pain is gone. gone. The groaning has passed. passed. Glory has come. come. And Kathy, Kathy, this week you will have memorial service for Erwin, Erwin. And, and the same the joy. joy. You only were married, married since Father's Day, Day hardly six, six weeks. weeks. And yet in the yet time, time that we visited, visited shared, shared the Lord's the words, words, and you watched, watched the services, services here at home, home. We will see Erwin again, again. Child, child of God, God. Groaning, groaning now, now with the pain, pain of leaving, of leaving. But, but certainly the hope of everlasting, everlasting life, life with Jesus, Jesus, the forgiving Savior. Savior. If, you've if you've listened to the news, to the news you know that there's an old legend, legend there's an old myth about the, the Tokabaga Indians, Indians in the Tampa Bay area. 
that they bless their, their burial, burial grounds, grounds and their, their biggest burial, burial grounds, grounds is at Safety Harbor, Harbor not too not far, from, far here. from here. And because of that but blessing, blessing Tampa, Tampa Bay, Bay area, area has not, not been, been directly hit by a hurricane in over 100 years. years. That's, That's a legend. legend. That's a myth. That's there's nothing, nothing to validate or verify that, that, that these that Indians had any connection, connection to our God. God. But this, this is real. real. This, this is God's, God's truth. truth. And this, and this sustains, sustains us. us. And all, all the groaning and the maladies and decay and pollution and destruction that we see. When a hurricane happens, I'm, I'm happy that, that most of the people in those low-lying areas left. And when they came back, they came back to destruction, water-soaked possessions, muddy homes, but they were alive. They were alive. Certainly a message for you and me as well. Let all these all things, things be gone. Be gone. If on the day that we die, whether it be in a hurricane or whether it be from cancer or whether it just be from old age, but I know my Jesus. My Jesus has forgiven me. My sins are paid for. I, I love the second verse of the hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. My sin, not in part but in whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. A few moments we'll have the, the, privilege the privilege to come to the Lord's, Lord's table, table and say, and say once again, once again the, Lord the Lord will individually, individually physically give us his body and blood, and blood to assure us, along with his word, his word that we are his, his forgiven, forgiven now, now and forever. forever. Lots, Lots of groaning, groaning now, now, but then will then come the glory. Again. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. We confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken, in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning that we would not grow weary on the journey home to heaven, that we would not be waylaid by the tricks and temptations of the devil that we would that not we would be not too be complaining, complaining about all the, all the problems and difficulties, difficulties we face in this life. life. But we have hope. We, have hope. we know we where know we are where going. going. We, know we know that, that our, our sins, sins are, forgiven. are forgiven. We know there, we know is, there a is a Savior who lived and died, and died in our in place, place and is waiting, waiting for us in heaven. heaven. Keep our eyes our focused eyes focus on the glory that will be ours in your heaven, your heaven forever. forever. 
And dear Lord, we, we pray for Pastor Kurt Schauser of St. John's in Newburgh, Wisconsin, for the divine call that he has received to come and serve this congregation. We know it is a difficult time where there's lots of vacancies and lots of calls, but we pray that you would send your Holy Spirit into his heart to consider under which call you would have him serve. Which place is most needed to bring precious souls to salvation? Help us all to keep him in our prayers and to talk to him, contact him, and express the need that is here. Keep him safe until your Holy Spirit, through prayer, leads him to the right decision. And we pray for those who are in the path of Adelia. Most of us, it seems, have escaped the difficulties with just rain and a little bit of downed branches, but not so for others. Some in those low-lying areas have had their houses flooded. Some where the hurricane went, came on land have had their houses and homes destroyed. And it's good, it is good in a time like that to see how people pull together and help, and help arrives, arrives, and people are uplifted. People are uplifted. It is good it to hear when people when are people interviewed, to hear them to say as they look at their destroyed home, home but I'm still alive, the Lord is with us. If, dear Lord, that is your plan to draw people closer to you, then let us see the silver lining in great, great destruction that is around us. Bring people closer to you. And on this Labor Day weekend, we give thanks for those who roll up their sleeves or open up their computers and do your work honestly, respectfully, and to the best of their ability. It is how Labor Day came into being to give people a rest from oppressive hours, oppressive wages, and uh, oppression in the workplace many, many years ago. Let us look upon work as what we need to do to support ourselves, our family, and have some left over for others, that people may come to know you in this time of groaning before the Lord shows up with his glory. We place this in your hands and ask for your blessing upon it. And hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Whether we pray together or alone, you have promised to hear and answer us. Give us patience to accept your blessings in whatever way you send them. In your love and wisdom, prepare us for the day when you will take us to be with you forever. Here, for Jesus' sake. We'll receive the offering at this time. May the Lord bless the efforts.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is thanks and praise. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, to Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock till he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are you, Lord God, eternal King and gracious Father. In love you have made us the crown of your creation. In mercy you planned our salvation. In grace you sent your Son to redeem us from sin. We remember and give, give you thanks that your eternal Son, Jesus Christ, became flesh and made us dwelling among us, that he willingly placed himself under law to redeem those under law that he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death on a cross, that he has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Bless us as we receive your son's body and blood in this sacrament. Forgive our sins, increase our faith, strengthen our fellowship, and deepen our longing for the day when Christ will welcome us to his eternal feast. Praise and thanks and honor and glory be to you, O God, our Father, and to your Son and to the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the After same manner also, also he took, he the, took cup. the cup. And when and he had, when given, he had thanks, given thanks, he gave it to them, them saying, Take, drink, take you drink you all from it. This cup is the New Testament, Testament in my blood, blood. shed for shed you for, for the remission of sins. sins. This do as often, often as you drink, drink of it in remembrance, remembrance of, me. of me. Peace of the Lord be Lord with you, you always. <laughs>
Jesus is the true body. Your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death on the cross for the forgiveness of all our sins all the way to heaven. May our Savior's true body and blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith all the days of your life through the groaning to the glory of heaven for all eternity. You can depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. perfect life and died the innocent death it is forgiveness on an old wicked cross would be forgiveness to all who believe in him for time for eternity take it this is the true body Lord and Savior. He gave his life one time on one cross for all time that forgiveness would be ours. Lord, may your body and your blood be for our souls the highest good here in church and everywhere in our lives until we see Jesus face to face in heaven. You can depart in peace and confidence in your heart. Your sins are forgiven. This is the true body, your Lord and Savior, given into death on the cross to provide forgiveness of sins in our lives all the way to heaven.
died for our sins. Have forgiveness for you. God brings forgiveness. So that whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. In that way, you can depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Take, drink, this is his true blood shed for you for the remission of all sins. May it give you peace, may it strengthen your faith, may it give you confidence to live in the shadow of the cross all your days. Depart in his name, your sins are forgiven. Give thanks Give to thanks the Lord, to for, Lord he for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, cup we proclaim the Lord's Lord death, death until he comes. O oh God, the God Father, Father, source of all goodness, of all goodness in, your in your loving kindness you sent you your, your Son to share our humanity. Our humanity. We, thank we thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us but will rule, we'll our, rule hearts our hearts and minds, and minds by your Holy, by your Spirit, Holy Spirit, so that we willingly, willingly serve you day after day. 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 For Jesus Christ, our, Christ Lord, our Lord, who lives and reigns, and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit one God, God now, now and forever. And forever. Amen. The Lord bless Lord you bless and keep you. you. The Lord make the Lord his make face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace.
We welcome you this morning. It is a joy to be with you again. We're all safe and sound after a storm, so that's good. Next Sunday we'll begin our uh, <clears throat> Bible class and Sunday school time, so if you're still looking for Sunday school teachers, why wouldn't you want to instruct some young people that come up here with all these wonderful answers, you know? They knew it pretty well. And uh, Bible class, we're going to deal with uh, topics. And if any of you have any topic that you would like to be brought up in Bible class, we'll be happy to do that. And the Bible information class uh, continues on Wednesday evening, 6.30, so you're more than welcome to come. Uh, I've been through it many times, and I always learn something new, so I'm happy to do that. So we'll greet you at the door. Have a blessed day. There's still some coffee left back there for us. Hopefully, right? <laughs> Very good. Very good.